So paramagnetic and ferromagnetic properties depend on the temperature. Diamagnetic properties do not depend on the temperature. So at very low temperatures, there is very little thermal agitation, and so you can then easier align these dipoles, and so the values for kappa of m will then be different. For ferromagnetic material, if you cool it, you expect the kappa of m going up. So you get a stronger field inside. So it's temperature dependent. If you make the material very hot, then it can lose completely its ferromagnetic properties. What happens at a certain temperature that these domain, domains fall apart, so the domains themselves no longer exist. They annihilate. And that happens at a very precise temperature. It's very strange. That's also something that is very difficult to understand, and you need quantum mechanics for that, too. But at a certain temperature, which we call the Curie temperature, which for iron is uh, 1,043 degrees Kelvin, which is 770 degrees centigrade, all of a sudden the domains disappear and the material becomes paramagnetic. In other words, if ferromagnetic material would be hanging on a magnet and you would heat it up above the Curie point, it would fall off. It would become paramagnetic, but paramagnetic material in general doesn't hang on a magnet because the forces involved are quite small. And the change is very abrupt. And I'm going to show that to you with a demonstration. I have a ferromagnetic nut. It's right there. You will see it very shortly. And this nut, or washer, hanging on a steel cable, and there is here a magnet. I don't know whether this is north or south, it doesn't matter. And here we have a thermal shield. And so this washer is against the thermal shield because it's being attracted, it wants to go towards the strong magnetic field. It's ferromagnetic. So it will be sitting here. And now I'm going to heat this up above the Curie point, 770 degrees centigrade, and you will see it fall off. And when it cools again, it goes back on again. So I can make you see paramagnetic properties disappear. And let me make sure I have the proper settings. I see nothing. I see nothing. But there it is. So here is this nut. And here is this shield. And the magnet is behind it. You can't see it, but it's right there. And so it goes against it, right? It goes just towards the magnetic poles. It goes into the strong magnetic field. Magnetic field is non-uniform outside a magnet, and it goes towards it. And so now I'm going to heat it. It will take a while, because um, 770 degrees centigrade is not so easy to achieve. The three most common ferromagnetic materials are cobalt, nickel, and iron. Nickel has a Curie point of only 358 degrees centigrade. So if this were nickel, oh. If this were nickel, uh -uh. Now you like that, eh? I think I need a strong hand. A strong hand is coming. Okay, I think I fixed it. I'm a big boy, I did it myself today. I lost my pen, but that's a detail. Okay, let's try again. So I'm going to heat it up, and I was mentioning that um, nickel has a Curie point of uh, 358 degrees centigrade. So that's quite low. This is 770. Cobalt is 1400 degrees. Kelvin, Curie point. Gadolinium, it's a very special material. Gadolinium is ferromagnetic in the winter. 
when the temperature is below 16 degrees centigrade, but it is paramagnetic in the summer when the temperature is above 16 degrees centigrade. It's beginning to be red hot now. At 770 degrees centigrade, you expect some visible light in the form of red light. There it goes. And I will keep it heating. I will keep the torch on it so that you can see that indeed it's no longer attracted by the magnet. And the moment that I stop heating it, it will very quickly cool. It will become ferromagnetic again and it will go back. Just watch it. There it goes. So now it's again ferromagnetic. So the transition is extremely sharp. 